it's the weekend and it's time to have some fun with just a big pen, one single marker, in this case a cool grey one from Croba Markers, and a uh, sketchbook. This is actually the last page of this sketchbook. And I wanted to make it uh, a little bit special and sketch something classic. And what more? What could be more classic than a uh, Mark I Golf? Designed, of course, by the legendary Giorgetto Giugiaro and Ital Design. And it debuted in Europe in May of 1974 as a replacement for the Beetle. Noteworthy here is that Volkswagen changed the whole layout of the car and uh, moved the engine to the front and uh, switched from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive. So what I'm going to do here is just start with a couple of lines. When I sketch like this, I do have a reference pi reference a picture or image up on the screen to give me some, some, uh, some guidelines for the proportions and for where the lines go. And what I think about here is just first of all create a baseline. And once the baseline is out, I figure out the uh, wheelbase of the car, and that is the distance between the two axles, the front and the rear axle. And from there, I start to use those points, the circles of the wheels, as uh, guidelines for where the lines go. So how far behind the front axle, for example, where does the A-pillar start? How far behind the front axle does it start? And I do the same thing with all of the key lines that are in this design of this specific car. So first of all, if you want to do this yourself, the easiest way is of course to start by boxing everything out. And this is a very, very good car to start sketching because it is a, it's such a box of designs. It's pretty much just two boxes. The, uh, the hood and the, the greenhouse of the car. And once you have those proportions down, you can start to add the angles of the boxes, such as the rear C-pillar there. It has an angle to it. And also the hood has quite a steep downward angle to it. And all of those details can be added once you have the two boxes in place. Sketching pretty much anything becomes a lot easier when you do this, when you break the product down into simple geometry, such as circles, ellipses, boxes, rectangles, and so on. Because once you have that down, you can see the overall picture of the sketch, and when that is complete, then you start to add all the details of the sketch. This is my favorite way of sketching. Just loosely have some fun, throw down some lines, and not overdo the marker work. I like to keep the markers very subtle, and most of the times I don't use more than three markers, and that would be uh, a couple of cool grays, and then maybe a black, but you can also use black uh, with a big pen. So the big pen, if you fill out the strokes and lines and add thickness to them, you can use that as a black marker as well to fill out the baseline, for example, and the wheel arches and the tires and all of those details. So what we're going to do in this video is first of all create this analog sketch of the side view of the original Mark I Golf. Uh, and then we're going to, I thought it would be fun to jump into Photoshop and try to create something uh, like a funny little hatchback with some modern touches, but keep the same proportions as the Golf Mark I. So kind of have it be uh, some modern touches to the design while still keeping the soul and simplicity of the Golf Mark I. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use one or two cool grays for this sketch. I started out with just a simple cool gray one. And to me, normally that is enough because it gives you that uh, basic shading of the car. But if you want to add some more depth to the sketch, you can always add a cool gray three. Add some blue tones. To, if you want to add color, the easiest way to start with colors is to add some blue shading to the top parts of the car. And that meaning the parts and the surfaces of the car that are facing up towards the sky. You kind of want to have those be a little bit blue, a very light blue to reflect the sky, and then have the ground be some light brown tone or red tone. And that would be all the surfaces that are facing down towards the ground. Now that we're done with the analog sketch here, let's jump into Photoshop and let's see if we can come up with some uh, cool looking funky concept. It might not be exactly a Mark I redesign or modernization, but I want to keep that uh, the soul of the Mark I, the simplicity, and that it's all about the driving, that kind of feel. I want to have that feeling in the design. So very simple lines, very simple graphics as well. We're just going to have some fun in Photoshop, so let's see what we come up with here. 
I heard a quote once that stuck with me, and that was something, I might, I might butcher it right here, but that was something that goes, it goes something like this. You can read about how to uh, slapshot a hockey puck in books as much as you want, but the first time you do it, you're going to suck at it anyway. And that's, <laughs> that goes for sketching as well. You can read about how to sketch things and how to uh, get things correct in perspective, how to render the shading and all of that, but the first time you do it, for at least a couple of years, uh, or at least a year, you're not gonna be that good at it. And that, that just comes down to practice. So I get a lot of DMs and emails uh, from, from people asking, how do you get started with the sketching? And how, you know, my sketches doesn't look that good, but neither did mine 15 years ago. I mean, if you stick with something for 15, 20 years, the odds are that you are going to improve what it is you're doing. The thing is, the, the, the hard part is just sticking with something for that long. I think it's getting more and more, uh, it, it's harder today because we have all these things that just needs to happen instantly. And we want to, we, you know, we have everything on demand today. So sticking with something, I think that if you just manage to stick with something that you like doing, you're already pretty much there where you want to be if you can just picture yourself five ten years from now if you've done this on a daily basis but i can't really talk for the younger generation i'm not that old but you know i didn't grow up with a cell phone in my hand i didn't grow up with all these distractions we had tv of course tv shows and stuff but for example if uh, if i were meeting up with some friends we made plans on the day before or something like that uh, to meet up at this place and then you know you basically just went there and met up with the person and not just you're not connected all the time i think it's kind of veering off the sketch talk here but i think this is an important topic to talk about because today i don't think it's a good idea to be connected a hundred percent of the time that you're awake we have our phones with us everywhere we go and I can't help but wonder if that puts a break on your potential or what you really want to do, but you just don't know it because you're getting distracted all the time by, by your phone and everything that's around you nowadays. I don't know if any of this makes sense, but I feel like I'm, I, I'm talking right now to the people that are messaging me and asking me about you know getting better at something. It doesn't have to be sketching, it can be anything. Uh, my answer, I know it's not the answer that most people want to hear, but the answer is very, very simple. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's very simple. And that is to daily practice the things you want to get better at. And that's it. It might not look like the best sketches or you might not lose 20 pounds the first week. You probably, you most likely won't, but if you stick with it, and if you keep a sketchbook from every day and then you look back at the first page at the end of the year, 365 sketches later, you're going to see that there is a massive improvement there. And that's the message that I want to try and uh, get to people, even though I know that it might be hard to understand that concept of doing something daily for a year. I don't know if it's different now than when I was a teenager or something like that, but if you do that, that's the only way for you to get better at something. So here's my advice for you. If you want to get better at sketching, if you want to lose some weight, if you want to gain some weight or whatever it is you're trying to do, is to start today and then plan at least a year ahead. So do something every single day that will move you towards whatever goal you have. So if, let's take sketching here, for example. It doesn't have. It doesn't mean that you have to create a uh, three-hour rendering every single day. What it means is that daily, once a day, you pick up the pen and you pick up a piece of paper, whatever it is you have available to you. It doesn't have to be any brands or any specific markers or anything like that. Just pick up whatever you have available right in front of you and you scribble down some lines on a piece of paper. It can be a bunch of ellipses. It can be a bunch of lines or circles or whatever you want. And if you want to practice a specific product, then Google that image and try to figure out the geometries of that product and break it down to those simple geometries of that product because all products 
are built up of simple geometries and simple shapes before you jump into the details and the curvatures and the ra ra radiuses and all of that stuff. You have these simple forms that connects together and create a product. So do that for a year and then you look back at the sketchbook. You keep it in one sketchbook or a stack of papers or whatever it is you choose to do and then compare. Try not to compare week to week or day to day because you're not going to see a big difference there. But if you compare month to month, so you have 12 days in the year when you look back to the first sketch of that month and then the last sketch of that month, that's going to give you this, this, uh, th the proof that you need to, the only way to get better is to put in the time. And when you see that you actually are getting better, it's going to give you this motivation to continue to do this throughout the year. And then the highlight, of course, is at the end of the year, you take your first sketch, you put it down on, on the table, and then you take the last sketch that you just did the same day. And then you compare the two, the, you compare the quality of the lines, you compare the quality of the ellipsis, the shading and all of that that you've been working towards. And I guarantee you that you will see a massive difference. All it takes is time. I hope this was helpful and made sense to you and that you start doing this today. You don't have to delay it until tomorrow. Just start right now, pick up a pen or go to the gym or do whatever it is you're trying to do and start right this moment working towards that goal. Well, there we have it. That was a fun little project bringing back the old style of hatchbacks from the 80s and the 90s and keeping the same kind of proportions of that era and bring it in to a modern look so it looks like it could be designed today. So I wanted to keep the basic elements of the graphics and the proportions very, very simple. So basically it's two boxes and then you have the simple graphics of the rear just to make a fun looking hatchback that looks like it could be one of these old hatchbacks that was really fun to drive. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I'm the Sketch Monkey, and if you enjoyed these kind of videos, you might want to check out my courses down below in the description where I teach you how to sketch like this, cars and products as well, using pen and paper. Or if you're into digital, we're going to jump into Photoshop and a tablet as well. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.